March is in the bags, so here are all the games that I beat for March. So the very first game that I beat in March was Pokemon Legends Arceus. This is one of the few games that I decided because I saw Zombie JLT play this and streamed a lot of it. I was going to play it. I was going to finally get it and beat it. Now the one thing that is different from the other Pokemon games, and I'm not bagging on the other Pokemon games. I loved, I, I played and, and finished uh, Yellow a long, long time ago. Pikachu is my go-to. And I was so tired, burnt out, I kept trying a new Pokemon. And I hated that every five feet you would walk and battle something. Battle a Pokemon, battle a person, battle anything. I just wanted to walk around and explore sometimes. And so when I saw this, I was like, this is going to be right up my alley. I like chill vibes. I like games like Animal Crossing and different things like that. So when I saw this and I heard a lot of people said they didn't like it, I was like, well, I can see why, but... You gotta try it out and just see what's going on so i took my time finally got through all the fights i did get there is a few battles and there's a final battle that is to get the flute for to get arceus and that was a person that is betraying you so i'm not gonna spoil the story so if you have not played it yet you definitely need to try it out and see what's going on with that but yes there is somebody that's gonna turn on you and try to steal everything and get all the stuff to be able to find arceus before you so I really, really enjoy that part. It is a tough battle. You definitely need to build up your health potions and make sure you have everything going for your Pokemon so you can battle it, but it, it's really difficult. I, I recommend take your time with this so you're good to go on that one, but 10 out of 10, I highly recommend it. If you're a person that likes to explore, collect things, craft, it's right up your alley. If you like occasional battles, you're going to have a fun time with this. So I beat it, got all the way to the final battles that it was going to be. And now I'm still collecting. It's going to take me a little bit of time to get all the way to Arceus because you have to get like 240 something Pokemon, which is a lot. But I'm working my way through. I got about 100 something. And I definitely want to get to the end and see Arceus and battle Arceus. After that, I played and beat my first Final Fantasy game. That is Final Fantasy 15. I've been wanting to play a Final Fantasy game and beat it, but I would always get stuck somewhere. And no matter what I did or tried, it just took me a lot of time to just get all the stuff that I needed and only to lose. So I like this version. It gives you a little bit of help. It tells you what is recommended for levels. So if you go through something, you're not going to just waste your time. You're going to need to battle a lot of side quest enemies and build your character up. Uh, you play as four characters and the four characters are working their way through to get to the final battle to stop this evil guy who you think is helping you in the beginning only to find out that he's actually trying to steal the throne from Natus and you are a prince and you're three people and you can play whoever you want to play. Um, the one thing I do like is once you're whatever character you can ask them to assist you the other three and you could push whatever directional diagonal button you need just to like say you want to like do a super strike you can do that. There was a lot of tough battles and bosses that were ridiculously hard and I'm grateful for the recommendation because it would have been tough if I was under leveled. So I recommend it. It's probably still on PlayStation Plus, I believe. They haven't taken it off after they found out everybody was going to be irritated. So I recommend it. It's highly easy for anybody who's never played an RPG to play. And it will take you a couple months because you're going to need to get through everything at least... I don't know, a few weeks for sure, but definitely one that I would recommend. Next is Tekken 7. I wanted to play another fighting game, and I saw that Tekken 7 was on there. And for some odd reason, I do have it in my collection. But here's the thing, I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. So it's lost in the void. Um, either it's in my game room or somewhere in a bin, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I can't find it. So it's on the Game Pass, and I decided to play it. So... I do like the story. I like how they just stopped with all the beat em up stuff. That is not what's, what the game is about. You can just play through the story. Uh, you battle and you do play multiple characters just like a lot of the other fighting games where you could be Nina and then Jin and then like you could be Heiachi. So you just gotta know a little bit of... Well, there's like many color core styles from Tekken but 
I do recommend this one. It's a lot better than six. So if you play Tekken six and kind of like fell off, go back. You will enjoy this one. It's a good one. And the story was interesting. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but they're fighting. They're always trying to throw each other off the cliff and everybody else is caught up in the chaos and there's always a Tekken tournament. So we'll see what happens with eight. I can't wait. And I will be glued to the screen waiting to see what's gonna be next. After the fighting game, I decided to play a game I thought was a sequel, and that is New Super Lucky's Tale. I really did think it was a sequel, but uh, found out that it's actually not even, it's just a remaster or a remake. I'm 50-50 I'm because it technically has the same storyline and the same everything, but it also is different because the only reason I counted it was because many of the boss battles are way different. They're 100% scratched, changed, and the animations are different, and the sequences are different. That's the only reason why I counted it, because I was like, I just beat Super Lucky's Tale. I don't know if I can count this. And then when I, because I even, that's why I thought it was going to be a sequel, because I started playing and I'm like, this is different, that's different. But then I'm like, you're still collecting pages from the book that they stole and the cats are. And the cats are still there. It's all the same cats. It's all the same characters. So I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> they tricked me and then I thought it was a sequel, but good thing I tr played it. It's a remaster remake and I'm having fun with it. So definitely try it out. I don't know if it's uh, going to be on Game Pass very long, but I had a blast with it. The next game that I played and beat was an interesting one. It's called The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. This is a story driven narrative game and it's kind of like a walking simulator but the one thing that's different from a lot of the other games is it's not linear. You walk and you start your story and you find out you're a detective trying to find Ethan who is missing and you don't know what happened to that person. You just know you got a bunch of letters from the kid and you're trying to figure out what bad thing happened to the kid. So you walk around in the forest, you're looking through all this stuff and you come across a dead body. And the one thing that I enjoyed about this game was it did help you on the first part, but then after that, it lets you just to your own devices. So you could be walking around and you'll find traps, you'll find different things, you'll find another story, another story. And you could miss a story because what I did was I came across something. I didn't know how to beat it. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I gave up and I just kept walking and it let me go. It just let me walk around. And then I came across a bunch of houses. I'm like, oh, okay, so let me go through. And then I saw another person that was sadly passed away in the game. And then I realized, oh, this is what you do. So then I backtracked and I went back to the other one and went, oh, okay, now I got it. So I finished that part, then I came back, and I was like, gotcha. Okay, makes sense now. So I liked this game. It even tells you in a warning that it's not going to handhold you. You have to figure out the story along the way, or you're going to get screwed. So recommend it. It's definitely a game that it's not going to be linear. If you get stuck or you don't know what you're doing, you get all the way to the end. There is a map, and it shows you, checks off what you missed. And thankfully, I found all of them. So... I was just wandering around, just trying everything. And so I found all of the end story was weird. It's a weird twist, but I didn't want to spoil it that one either. So I recommend it if you can find it or if it's on a good price, pick it up, try it. It's a really old game. I didn't know it was that old because I thought it was like brand new. And then I looked it up because I was like, I want to see if there's like a sequel or anything like that coming out. Found out it was like several years old, so. You're definitely gonna get a good price on it on Steam or PlayStation for sure. After Ethan Carter, I decided to play a game on stream and that was called Knack. And okay, Knack is good after the first four or five chapters. Many people are not gonna play it all the way through. It's very cheesy, corny, weird storyline. So I, I understand to everybody who is just like written off Knack. I understand it. I decided to keep playing because I was like, it's got to get good. Why is it on everything? I hear people talking about it. So I can agree the first part of the story, horrible. So if you passed on it and you stopped after like chapter four because you didn't see it get any better, it's not until like chapter seven or eight <laughs> that it gets good. And I don't think if it was a game that I paid for, I would kept playing. I probably would have been pissed wanted my $60 back and asked for a refund immediately. So 
yeah, NAC is going to be a slow burn. So if you definitely are not wanting to burn through, take your time, don't worry about it. It's a game that is trying to be an homage to a lot of old school PlayStation 2 games, but it didn't have to do that. It could have had a lot more enemies, could have a lot more stuff, but I did hear from Gib that it was uh, a lot better, that it got better as we go along. So NAC 2, I'm gonna see if it's on Game Pass eventually, try it out for free, but yeah, give it a shot. It's free right now. Then I went to another fighter right after that, and it's called Fighting EX Layer. This was an interesting fighter. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, I never heard of this fighter ever. I don't think I would have even tried it if it wasn't on Game Pass for free. So it's a good style. I like it. Um, it's kind of like that Blue Blaze fighting game that I had back in the day when I, on a couple other videos that I had shown. Definitely that kind of style core where it's got a lot of like special moves and different things like that and a lot of counters and you have to block a lot. So definitely block. It's your friend, but not bad. I, I recommend it for you. After that, I decided to play Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition for the PlayStation 5. It was on Game Pass as well. And I wanted to see what happened to Dante. Um, I'm not going to spoil the story too much, but you follow Dante's story. You are going through and you're playing a character you don't know who he is, but he keeps following Dante and keeps helping and his arm is missing. And so you can get a Mega Man arm if you want, so you can get a bunch of stuff and they give you special powers and different things you can do with them. So I recommend this one. Dante is cheesy, corny, good. It's a great story. There's a lot of references to different other side Capcom games. Uh, there is a bunch of stuff that you're like, oh, there's that, there's this, there's that. So a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of fun. It's a hack and slash beat em up game that you're gonna enjoy. And Dante's story keeps going. I love it. I, I am so happy that it was on Game Pass and I got to finally play it because I don't know if I would have played it, but you never know. So grab it, get the game, put it in your system and play it. After that, I decided to play an Uncharted that I haven't played yet, and that is the last Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. I don't know if it's going to be the final one, but you follow Chloe and Nadine. These are two characters that were in the other Uncharted games, and they were just side characters that you either battled, they were somebody that you didn't know if you could trust, but you go in and you are trying to find a relic, like always, it's the exact same copy and paste. You climb a bunch of things, you go solve a puzzle and then you finish it. I finally completed the game and I can say thank you Ingeniuses. This was a great game. I recommend it to anybody who likes Uncharted games and iffy about this one. It's a little bit shorter, but again, you just shoot, do the same copy and paste. So if you like the other Uncharted games, you like this one. After Uncharted, I wanted to play a game that is also a narrative game. This is Life is Strange 2. Um, the reason why I kind of skipped Life is Strange 2 was because I saw a lot of people stream it already and so I kind of knew the story and I saw that it was a lot darker than the other ones. So I do like Life is Strange 2. For those who don't know, it's following two brothers and those two brothers are witnessing a horrible event happen in the beginning of the game and then they have to figure out what's going on. This is the first game where you don't play as the person who actually has the powers but your little brother is the one with the powers and so you have to guide him and it, whatever you do, it dictates the ending of the game. There's a bunch of nudity and it's a lot darker than the other two games before it and the third game. But I do recommend if you can handle dark, crazy stuff happening a lot, then you can definitely like this game. And the one thing that I did not like about the game was there was a lot of stuff that you're like, huh? Okay. So there's moments where you're like, really, I have to do this? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> so I kind of skipped a lot of stuff. I didn't really collect a lot of the things like I usually do, but you could have moments where people can die. You can choose to have somebody get hurt. This happens, that happens. Um, I will say that I do like 2 a lot better than some of the other games because of there's so many endings to this game. There's so many endings. It's ridiculous how many endings you could have. You could have uh, endings where the brothers separate. You could have endings where this person has this happen to them. 
And so I wish that the next Life is Strange game has this many endings as the other ones don't have. They have like two or three options and that's it. So hopefully the next games will give you something or maybe let's have the other all the games protagonists collide and we see everybody in there. So who knows? And the last game for March is Street Fighter V Champion Edition. So I wanted to download Street Fighter V, the original game. It's listed on the Game Pass, and when I went to do it, it downloaded Champion Edition instead. I don't know why they kept it there. I don't know if they should just not had it at all. They should just had the Champion Edition, but it confused me and weirded me out. But I, I was like, okay, whatever. So for those who don't know, it's just the same Street Fighter game, but uh, you get a bunch of new characters. So for story mode, um, I don't like to say sometimes games are too easy, but when they are really, really easy, kind of frustrates me just as, just as much as games that are difficult, too difficult, and are not fair. So Street Fighter V, the story is too easy, way too easy. I'm used to at least the final character being so difficult to the point where I'm like battling or somewhere in the middle or somewhere like the couple before the very last person. It didn't cohesively go together. So when you battle in the story mode, you can either battle all at once and have all the characters and you go through everybody's story or you could have each individual story and I chose to do the each individual story and I'm kind of glad I did because I don't think it cohesively goes together anyway so <laughs> when you see the story play out you play as all the original characters from Street Fighter and you play as like Bison and the other bad guys that are well bad guys uh, the other people that are in the story mode but I just never got a challenge like even when the last guy was battling I just I couldn't get it like I got it. I was like, dude, I beat this in like a day. Like usually when I play a Street Fighter game, I'll take a day and a half or two days to finish the game. I literally just played through it and I had no problem. So I was like, <laughs> if you are a fighter, like you're into fighting games, bump it up. Bump up, go from normal to whatever the next level is if you can, because otherwise you're just gonna go, huh, I'm done. And not very many people have beaten the story mode, and I can see why. But I don't know, maybe the game didn't sell well. Who knows? But that is it, everybody. That is all 11 games that I beat for the month of March. Let me know if you are new. What are the games that you've beaten for the past month? If you are not sure, you could just give me some highlights. And if you also liked the content, please give it a like. If you are not sure, watch a couple other videos. Give me a sub. It helps out the channel. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal.